What's up everyone? I am in one of my trampoline parks that shut down due to coronavirus. And um, I've been talking a lot to people that are in the process of quitting their jobs or trying to figure out how they can quit their jobs. Usually it's people that have gone to big schools and have taken on a lot of debt to uh, work as bankers or lawyers or accountants or consultants or whatever. And so I thought I'd give a couple tips and tactics and things that I learned in my process out of quitting my legal job at a big law firm and moving on to entrepreneurialism and the things that I'm glad that I did and the things that I wish that I would have done differently. So let's get into it. The first thing that you need to do if you're sure that you want to quit your job is you need to get your expenses under control and you need to start building a cash cushion so that way you have the time and the cash necessary to do whatever it is that you're looking to do that that has the time to get off of the ground. Because if you don't have the cash reserves to make it last for six months, eight months, nine months, then you're giving yourself a very short leash in order to be able to figure things out for yourself. So when I quit my law, law job back in 2015, I had $30,000 in savings, but I knew that when I quit, I was going to move in with my wife's parents. And so I knew that living expenses would be minimized. I didn't keep insurance even though I had a young one-year-old daughter at the time. We just figured if something happened to us, we would figure it out, make it work. Um, and so with 30 grand in savings at that time, it felt like we had enough to make it work for a year um, before we needed to figure something else out. So that's how much I had in savings. Um, I think I was also pretty confident that I could reduce my monthly burn to a pretty low level. Um, another thing that I did before I quit my job, I had high W-2 income. I was making 180 grand a year. And while you have your W-2 income, it's important to apply for any loans, credit cards. I applied for a line of credit with Wells Fargo. I asked for 120 grand and got approved for 40 grand, but it didn't incur any interest while I wasn't using the line of credit. So it's something that as my escape room business that I was moving into took longer to get off the ground than I thought that it was going to take, I knew that I had that $30,000 of cash cushion and then I also had a line of credit that I could pull on to uh, make things work if I needed it. The next thing that I think that you need if you're serious about quitting your job in 2020 is finding a mentor, finding the person that you wanna be like when you grow up um, that can help you along the path and that made over a hundred million dollars buying distressed debt and everyone in my life was negative about the idea of me quitting my job but he was there saying you don't want to be a lawyer for the rest of your life I don't know any lawyers who are happy I don't think that you should stay and just having that guidepost there to help me along the path and and think this is a guy that I actually want to be like when I grow up I'll much rather listen to his advice than the advice of my parents or my siblings or these people that haven't gotten somewhere that I want to be. And that really helped me in the dark moments when there was a lot of negativity or negativity around me um, to keep moving forward. And that's the other thing is you need to find positive people in your life. I had that guy and I had my wife as the big positive forces that continue to encourage me, continue to be there. As you decide that you want to quit your job, you're going to get a lot of pushback from people that you think care about you that will tell you that you can't do what the thing that you're thinking that you can do and um, will be very negative about the idea of you quitting your job to try to do something that you'd like to do. Be positive, join masterminds, join Facebook groups, find people online, hit me up and um, keep finding positive people that can help you along in the process. Next, you'll learn that loose lips sink ships and you shouldn't tell anyone at your job that you're thinking about quitting. I made this mistake as I was quitting my law firm. I had come into the law firm with a co cohort of associates and 
I found out that um, they did not share the same entrepreneurial tendencies that I did. And in that process, I learned that as I was telling them that I was planning on quitting, they were telling their uppers and it eventually got to the partnership that I was planning on quitting my job. And so when I quit my job, the partners knew that I was going to quit. And a couple, a couple weeks prior to me quitting my job, they started to really tighten the screws on me, started giving me bad assignments that they knew were bad assignments and were really trying to force my hand. And it was pretty obvious that they were trying to make the job as uncomfortable as possible for me before I quit. And it made those last couple weeks of me quitting as I was getting my ducks in a row and figuring out living and moving and all those things that I could normally do under the radar before my two weeks notice. It made it really difficult to do that because the associates, especially if you're working in a professional job, associates and partners don't have a lot to talk about. And so somebody who's thinking about quitting gives them good office gossip and office drama to discuss. And it's also a way for associates to bring valuable information to partnership and for them to look good like they're looking out for the firm. And so once they know that you have one foot out of the door, don't expect them to keep that, that loyalty and keep that trust because um, you'll probably get sold down the river like I did, which ended up not being a, a huge deal. It just made it inconvenient and it's something that could have been avoided had I just kept my mouth shut. Again, I know it's common to want to find someone who can relate and to and who can be a positive force for you. But what you'll find is that if people are staying at their job and they're not talking about quitting, it's because they're not thinking about quitting. They're thinking about doing well at their job. And so as you start to talk about quitting and you'll naturally be negative about what's happening in the workplace and how you're so excited to move on to the next thing and you can't wait till you put your two weeks notice in all that stuff, they will let that slip to the uppers and you will be outed uh, before you put your two weeks notice in. At least that's the risk and it's just a risk that can be completely avoided and it's not worth taking that risk on um, just so you can have somebody to commiserate with because chances are they're not thinking about it at all. Another thing that I wish I had known as I quit my job was I wasn't really prepared for them to send me packing the day that I put my two weeks notice in and that's not what they did to me. I gave my two weeks and after I put the two weeks in, they were much nicer to me. They didn't really press on me that hard. It was just two weeks of not doing much and having them offload the work and the projects that I was working on. But I have had friends that have gone to put a two week or a four week notice in trying to give their company enough time to offload them off of projects. And they're shown the door that same day. And they were planning on those last four weeks of pay to come in. And so, I'm of the mind and you'll get different opinions on this. Some people will say, let your boss know beforehand that you're thinking about quitting. I'm of the mind that once you once you quit or once you make it known that you're going to quit, it's every man for himself and it's not worth putting that trust in your boss and, and the partnership or management to have your best interest at heart as you're looking to move on to other things. and. This is the same advice I have employees in the businesses that I run now. And when my employees tell me that they are going to move on to other things, my concern as an employer is that those last two or four weeks, whatever they're trying to give me notice for, that during that time, they will be cancerous to the organization and that they will spread rumors and be negative with the workforce that's still there. And so it's a risk that you have to run and you have to calculate. My advice is to have your best interest at heart and the time that you put in two weeks notice or you put in your resignation, make sure that you don't need the ongoing payments and you're willing to be shown the door that same day because it's possible that they'll do it. Um, and it's just a risk that you're running and I don't think it's worth running and giving that power to the job that you're going to quit. After you give them your two week notice or your four week notice and they don't make you resign, the other thing that potentially might happen is they may 
ask you if you're willing to accept a counter offer. And you'll get differing advice on this as well. My advice on counter offers is to almost never take them because the reasons why you're unhappy and the reasons why you're thinking about quitting will still be true even if the amount that's getting deposited into your bank account every two weeks is slightly increased. So whatever the boss dynamics are or the upward potential, it's unlikely that they go from undervaluing you at the price that you were getting paid previously and you tell them that you're moving on to other things and then they go and then they right size and they value you properly from then on and then it just becomes a great job from that point on. That's a very unlikely scenario to happen. And again, I've been on the employer side of it as well where employees come and quit and I will make counter offers to them, but after the counter offer is made, that's usually a band-aid that's used to solve short-term problems. And as upper management, we talk about ways that we can minimize the impact of them leaving ever again. They're then very clearly labeled a flight risk from that point on. And we check in on them more. And we also are very cognizant of the fact that they could leave again and what processes will be disrupted if they do leave again. So there's always a hesitation from a manager's perspective to have a lot of reliance on that person ever again. And it's the exact opposite of giving them upward mobility. We say, okay, let us make you a counter offer so we can give you 10 or 15% because I don't wanna deal with the short-term problems of having to backfill your position. But from a going forward standpoint, I'm always thinking if, these, if this person is unhappy for another week or two, that they always run the risk of leaving. And because of that, I won't give them upward mobility because I don't want them to own full processes that I don't have good eyes on. So that way, if they do leave and they're in charge of this brand new initiative, I know it's even more pieces that I have to pick up on a going forward basis. And so I always tell people, and I do this with the people that I make offers to, because usually if I'm offering them and they're at a different job, their old job will make them a counter offer. And I'll always tell them, don't even think about a counter offer. And usually if people, my employees are going to something else, um, I'll make a counter offer for a short term stopgap. But in my head, I know that there's, um, there's a flight risk there that I have to minimize on a going forward basis. Also, something to think about as you're thinking about when you're giving notice, uh, try to use any time off that you have, any benefits you have, any dental visits or um, surgeries that you may need, especially if you're going and quitting and doing something entrepreneurial. You won't have insurance for a while. When I quit, my Cobra, uh, which is the the insurance that you can use as a stopgap to keep using your job insurance, but your job isn't subsidizing it anymore. Cobra was going to be like $3,000 a month. So I didn't have insurance for probably 18 months after I quit. And same with, that's also the reason why you try to get credit while you still have a high income. If you're going to do something entrepreneurial, um, and you want to buy a house and it's unlikely that you're, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to qualify for a house for the foreseeable future, unless you have multiple incomes, um, because you'll need at least two years of tax returns on your self-employment income in order to qualify for a mortgage. If that's something that you're wanting to do, take your kids to the doctor, use the pediatrician, all those things. You should do all those things before you put your two weeks notice in. And sometimes people get worried that, oh, maybe my job's gonna know that something is up. Um, and they get worried about the job, figuring it out prematurely because they're going to the dentist and they're getting all this work done. And that's true, the job kind of has an idea. I know whenever I see an employee that's kind of been complaining about what's been happening at my business, once I see them upgrade their car and kind of buy a new house, um, I know that something is happening um, but it's not something that I'm going to be proactive and fire them over. It's just something that I have an idea that something's happening in the background. So that's something that you can do in the background while you're preparing, use your paid time off 
whatever agreements get get made between you and your employer about when you're gonna quit or if you're gonna give them an extra week, whatever, make sure all that stuff is in writing. I've had a lot, a lot of people that have hit me up and asked me about employment disputes, about uh, bonuses that were promised or um, equity that was supposed to be paid out, all those things. Uh, get really messy once you're no longer with the company, once they no longer need you. They will be very expensive to try to fight in court. So try to get as much as, of it cleaned up as possible and get it in writing. If your boss says, oh, don't worry, the bonus will totally have you. Don't worry about it. We just need you for this one extra week. Say, that's so great. I completely appreciate it. If I could just get that in an email from you with your signature or whoever else needs to sign off on it, I'll be more than happy to stay for the week. Um, you just have to get it in writing because once you're gone and you go to try to collect on any of that stuff, it's just gonna be impossible to get it worked out. So I hope this stuff helps. If you haven't, please like, subscribe, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I think in my next video, I'm gonna talk about ways to generate income after you quit or while you're still in your job preparing to quit. So like, comment, subscribe, do it, 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 do it.